and welcome to a new short series that we're doing called the Contender Series. We'll be playing new commanders from Neon Dynasty and the Street Fighter Secret Lair. The winner of this match will then go up against more well-established decks from the CDH meta uh, to figure out how good are the new commanders. And today I am playing Shurikai. It's a vehicle Thusly not a creature. And the goal of the deck is basically just Shurikai is a value engine. Uh, it does go infinite with Easter Conceptor and Dramatic Reversal. And it has nice synergy with Unwinding Clock, Skull Clamp, kind of Malevolent Termit, just discarding it is nice. And it breaks parity of humility, which is really nice. It's something we haven't really had before. This is my first seven. Uh, it is very interesting. Two lands, Mana Crypt, that's a Shurikai turn two. Uh, Ranger Captain, always nice. Uh, Mana Crypt, as I said, always nice. Uh, Savin's uh, tutor and half of the combo in hand, but it's the wrong kind of tutor. Two la three lands, no real engines, counterspell, tutor, yeah, this is worse. I kind of want to keep this just because of the humility. I don't think that's reasonable, so I'll go to five. Yeah, <laughs> basically, we turned out fine, but not that great. Uh, this is a keep, way worse than the first seven, but keepable. Hi, I'm playing Shu Lin, Countless Kicks. My game plan is very simple. Get a bunch of instant towards my grave, cast Shu Lin, multi-kick those instants into her. When she goes to combat, I can cast those spells. In my opening hand, I have a Brainstorm, Snap, Puff of Exile, and Solve the Equation, so I can actually tutor for some cool things. I win with Mystical Tutor and Nexus of Fate. And the land hand is lacking lands and ramp, but we have a Search Wars Counter and a Brainstorm, so I think we're gonna be able to solve the problem. Hey guys, Jordan here with a Satoru Umazawa deck that I made. Basically, we just start off by playing small evasive creatures, then casting our commander, and then using his ability to ninja in bullshit like Jinja Texas. Okay, so my opening hand is great. Uh, we have a turn one uh, evasive creature. Uh, we have an ability to get our commander out on turn two. And then we on turn three, we can get Jinja Texas out. So it seems pretty sweet. Hopefully it works out. Playing Hinata, fun little Jeskai creature that does stuff based on who's targeting what. Opening hand for seven, uh, I think it's kind of neat. It's gonna help us get us get our commander out turn two, which is fairly nice. Uh, we have some interaction, and then after our commander is out, hopefully we get a bit more mana, and then we can do a Jeskai's will. I think it's a very strong hand. And uh, without further ado, uh, let the game start. I'll start my turn. Well, land for turn will be a City of Brass. Tap it, take one damage. You cast a soul ring. Response. Oh. I'll take two damage mental misstep though. Okay, last turn. Uh, so that ma mental misstep really hurts. I was basically relying on that soul ring to land because now I'm here at two lands, no commander, uh, no play turn two if I don't draw one. Uh, yeah, that's really bad for me. <laughs> draw a card, here's an island, and I pass. Hey, go to my turn. I'm going to play a Blue Delta. I'm going to crack it for an Underground Sea. And then I'm going to play a Period Sea. Okay, so I'm super happy that uh, Honest Mental Misstep uh, Pontus this turn. Because now my turn got to go off without a hitch. And I'm super happy. So hopefully we can uh, go turn the region to Texas. Drawing a card. I'm going to play a Windswept Teeth. I'm going to crack it. I'm going to grab a Tundra, let's say. I'll play a Mana Crypt as well. I'm gonna tap two, I'm gonna play a Felwar Stone, and I'm gonna play a Merchant Scroll. That is a great turn one. I'm actually gonna grab Paradoxical Outcome. I'm gonna put that in my hand and I'm gonna pass my turn. Take my turn. Uh, I'll play a Ancient Tomb. Pass my turn. In your end step, I'm gonna tap this blue here and cast a Brainstorm. I'm gonna draw three and put one, two cards back on top of my library. Then I'm gonna go to my turn, draw one of them, play the Scalding Tarn, sacrifice the Scalding Tarn for a Tundra. Tap both of these two for an Search for Ascanta and I pass the turn. I'm tap a Beep Bomb. I drew a mystery card that's, uh, that's unexpected. We'll start out by playing a Clear Water Pathway and a Mana Crypt. We'll tap a Mana Crypt for an Arcane Signal and then we'll tap these three for our commander. And if he resolves, I will cast my turn. So I'm kind of scared about this. Uh, his commander, after having tutored, can be really scary. It is possible that it is sealed for a Mana Crypt, which is a reasonable play, but the possibility of something bigger is really scary here. Yeah, what is it though? I mean, it could be, I'm guessing, like Rasakev doesn't straight up win for him here. Yeah, but straight winning doesn't, isn't required to win. That, 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 that's true, that's true. It could yeah. be a Villis here. Yeah, exactly. Like the old Jim Taxis or something. Like, yeah. I'm just scared in general, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna agree that Jordan and his uh, ninja guy is probably the threat. Don't, don't worry, I, I agree with you there. Play a Scalding Tarn. 
Uh, I'll crack it, grab a plateau, shuffle my library. I'm going to tap three. I'm going to play a Jessica's Will. Get six red, use two. I realize I can't do what I want to do because I've fetched the wrong colors. Unfortunate. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll play Hinata. Uh, after that, I will pass the turn. Take my turn. Land for turn will be a Mystery first. I'll fetch, uh, getting a Tundra. Then tapping four mana, taking three. Yes, my commander. Set and play. I'll pass the turn. Draw a card. Search of Ascanta triggers. I will look at the card and I am actually gonna keep it in my hand. I'll draw the card, play a planes, and someone really needs to deal with that very scary ninja guy over there. So here is a path to exile on him. Get out of here. All right, well, that's rude. Uh, yeah, uh, I got no response. I will go search for it. Then I'm going to play a Chromox. I'm going to imprint Snap, tap these two, and cast Malevolent Hermit. And then I'm uh, passing the turn. All right, I will go to my turn. Draw a card. I'll play a Swamp. A wand, cast a slither blade. Uh, then we're gonna cast recaster and cast Dumazel again. And if he resolves, I will pass the turn. Uh, playing command tower. I guess I can move to combat first. Yeah, I'm gonna hit uh, Jordan for uh, four in the air. And uh, next, I'm gonna tap three, and I'm going to cast solve the equation. I'll get a wheel of fortune. Uh, tap three, and I'm gonna wheel. I am so happy about this wheel. This is great. I mean, my hand solve the equation. Losing that one is a little bit sad, but we are down to two cards. Refilling a hand, we're gaining so much here. We really want to build our graveyard anyway for search of Ascanta and for more targets. So yeah, super happy. Well, fuck. Um, that's super sad, but hopefully uh, we will draw another sweet creature and ninja that into play. I'll discard a paradoxical outcome and a volcanic island. I discard blasting station, copy artifacts, door convention, and fierce guardianship. I discard solved equations and the blue Ottawara soaring city. I discard a golden lurker, a delay, and a ginger taxis. This is amazing. We have a Force of Will and a Submerge here, so we can actually get the as as Search of the Counter to flip on our next turn, and then we're gonna have some great targets with Submerge and some other spells from the graveyard that we can multi kick here. Yep, and we have more bullshit, so we are A okay. What my hand is, I'll just pass the turn. Actually, looking at the board state and look at my opponents, he has to realize Submerge, usually being a great card, is kind of useless right now because no one is controlling a forest, so it's actually 5 mana to cast instead of being free to cast, so not as great as I thought it was. I'll cast a Mox Diamond, reaching a Snow Card Plains. Tap 4, cast an Unwinding Clock. I'm gonna respond to that, casting Force of Will, pitching Submerge to it. I forgot. Yeah? Yeah? Hinata? Uh, yeah, never mind. You saw nothing. So a lot of people are actually saying that Hinata is a great stacks commander. I actually think Hinata is not a great stacks commander. I think Hinata is a great commander, but not as a stacks commander, because usually your opponents are capable of playing normally without really having a problem, because Hinata is only preventing targets. While for this example, I wasn't able to actually use a f my counterspell against this really key artifact that I really want to counterspell. With the winding clock in play, I'll pass the turn. I will uh, go to untap, and uh, you untap with me, my friend. In response to search of a count that tr call trigger, I'm gonna cast consider. Look at the top card. I actually want that in my hand, so it goes back, and then I draw a card from consider. I now have six cards in my library. Search of a count that resolves its trigger. I look at the top. I'm putting a Getaxian probe into my graveyard. I now have seven cards in my graveyard, and search of a count becomes an amazing new land. Then I'm drawing a card for the turn. I will play this Arid Misa, land drop. I will sacrifice Arid Misa. I will find a Hallowed Fountain, coming to play untapped, shocking it into play. Playing Mana Crypt. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana available. We're gonna cast Rhystic Study. Like, I could cast my commander here and start to do some value stuff, but I might actually just stick a little bit and just wait until I have more stuff in my graveyard anyway. And there's a Hinata in play, there's a Satoru in play, and there's an artifact that's really annoying, so I think I need to keep my interaction available here. And also, I need, I'm gonna need more mana to be able to interact here because of Hinata as well, so I, like, the Swords of Plowshare is actually two mana here. So I, I think I'm just gonna pass turn here and uh, keep my mana at the ready and have my Rhystic study available for some value. In your end step, I'll play one to activate your game. Going to, discarding, discarding a Yanyu. I'll play a Rush Flats, go to combat. I have effects during you going to combat. We're gonna tap this 
We're gonna cast this Sorcerer Plowshare on your commander by tapping one, two mana for it. Wait, uh, Sorcerer Plowshare resolves, I'll gain four life. Or is it two life? Gain two life. I'll go to second main phase, um, I'll tap seven mana. Yeah, cause, and cast Nezahal. Oh, all right. He can't be counted, right? He cannot. Yeah. Yeah, so eventually you just get to a point where you can just cast your bullshit instead of having to cheat it in. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh. <laughs> in your end step, I'll tap Mox Diamond and my commander to activate its, its ability. Draw two, discarding a Time Twister. These draws have been absolutely horrible this game. Uh, I'll start by playing this Ancient Tomb. And then I guess, let's see, so, so two, taking two damage, four, five, six. Uh, Shatter Skull Smashing on the stack where X is six, targeting two things, so the cost is reduced by two. And I would like to target the Neza Hall and... But yeah, I think I'll just do, let's do one token now, let's do... Uh, yeah, you both draw. Uh, I will respond by discarding three cards and exile Hall. Turn Citadel, Ponder, Grasslands, and he will go away. So yeah, I'm gonna put Helios Intervention on the stack, uh, which is two white and an X, and then you choose one, either you destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments, or target player gains twice X life. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna target every single artifact on enchantment on the board that is in mine, and then that would make X go up, but because I'm targeting one thing for each X, Hinata makes it cost zero. So for two mana, I can wipe every single enchantment and artifact on the board. So real question here, do we counterspell this with our force of will to protect our Rhystic Study? I actually think I don't, because Jordan is sitting on a lot of mana, and Jordan is going to draw a lot of cards with his creature soon, and Pontus also has a big card drawing spell in play as well. And I think I need to keep my force of will for a little bit longer, actually. So I'm actually gonna let this one go. In response, I'll activate my commander. Discarding a no card island. Go. Cool. Everything that is in mine, please go away. I'll move to combat and then I'll hit Jordan for four. I will pass my turn. Uh, end step as a whole. Welcome. Take my turn. Land of turn will be a mana. I'll tap two mana. Cast a social plowshares targeting your vessel. <laughs> Look at the bright side, Jordan. You're gaining seven life, right? I will discard a I will discard a Doki Voidwalker and Automaru and a Limduel's Vault. And Nezahal will go away. Okay, uh, then I'll pass the turn. Just leave him alone. Leave Nezahal alone. Before Nezahal comes back and before I take my turn, I'm gonna cause Visions of Beyond to draw a card. Then I'm gonna go to my turn and untap everything. Here's an island. I'm gonna cast my commander Shin Li Countless Kicks for a total of five mana, multi-kicking her twice. I'm gonna exile Sword to Plowshare, that has a great target on the battlefield, and Visions of Beyond. I currently have 11 cards in my graveyard, but once I get 20, Visions of Beyond will draw three cards. And with that, I'm floating, I'm having this Tundra untapped, and I pass the turn. Uh, Mons, I'm going to move to combat and attack. I take eight. Uh, second main phase, uh, I'm gonna cast Diabolic Intent, sacrificing my Slither Blade. In response to your Diabolic Intent, I'll take three, 30, to cast a, a Mind Sensor. That's rude. No. Okay. Uh, I will look at the top four and find a card. All right. I'll on top of keep draw and then I'll take three damage of the crypt. I'll play this uh, flooded strand and then I will tap three mana and I'll play a heuristic study. I'm going to respond to heuristic study by casting force of will, paying the extra for your Hinata, pitching submerge. I will respond by casting a deflecting swallow. Cool, a deflecting swallow goes to my graveyard, risk studies on the field. I will move to combat and I will hit Jordan for another four. I've hit you for 12 now, right? I will pass my turn after. Take my turn. Land of Tron will be a snow covered island. Tap out to cast my commander. That's not good. That's the best player I have. Tap six, taking three to cast my commander. Okay, yeah, you both draw. And then I'll pass. Draw a card. I want to play Prismatic Vista. I want to go to combat with my commander at your Yannis for free. Attack availability. I'm going to cast Swords to Plowshares. Paying extra for Hinata. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm targeting your Nessahal fight Jordan with swords, actually. And I'm paying extra for the Rhystic Study, because I have to do this before Nessahal disappears. I'm gonna cast Visions of Beyond, paying extra for Rhystic Study. So you get a card for my Visions of Beyond before Nessahal goes away, and I draw a card. We'll discard Thousand Face Shadow, a Prismatic Vista, and a White Steel Colossus. Then that'll trigger and uh, we'll jump it back. There's so much value here, like, it's very hard to actually get somewhere, because whenever you do something, someone is getting something for it. But hey, we're actually paying for the Rhystic at the very least, but so, yeah, something. Back in months for seven. 
I take seven. In main phase, I will cast Fairy Seer, which cry two. I will top one. I will pass the turn. Take on tap, take damage. Play a March Flats. I'll move to combat and hit Jordan for four. All right, yeah, fuck, I'll take them. And then I'll pass my turn. Take my turn. Tap one to activate my commander. Discarding Pain of Vapor. Land for turn will be a flip Seagit Wreckage, which is in something. Uh, Seagit Reborn. Pain three life. Tap two to cast a Oswald Fiddlebender. Fiddle Floating one of Ancient Tomb to pay for stick. Taking two. Then I'll cast a Mox Opal, paying for stick with the floating mana from Ancient Tomb. And with that, I'll pass the turn. Draw a card, put a land into play, an island. Whatever I do, they're gonna gain value here, but we still should do it. Go into combat with Shulin at Anis, casting Visions from Beyond and casting Swords to Plowshares, targeting Nessahal, paying for Rhystic Studies twice. Now, because Nessahal have been discarding so many cards, he actually, Jordan actually has 20 cards in his graveyard. That means I'm going to draw three cards from the Visions of Beyond. Nice! I love it. I love Ancestral Recall. One Ancestral Recall from here on out. That's nice. I'm actually just gonna discard Gemstone Cavendish to hand size and pass the turn here. Good, my turn. Okay, uh, go to combat. Um, attack mode, it's reset. I take seven. I will pass the turn. I'm just gonna do this because we're in a bad situation and can't get much worse. So I'm just gonna play this spell seeker into the haven. It's, uh, not drawing any cards. Spell seeker, okay. Uh, what is the top four? I wish you luck, friend. <laughs> I actually got three hits, which is amazing, but they're all sort of bad. But I'm gonna grab this ponder. Why not, baby? I'm gonna I'm gonna cast said ponder by uh, gotta do what you gotta do. I'll tap this spell or something. I'm gonna draw that and then I'll put these on top of my library. Cool. Then I'll tap. Yeah, I'm just gonna tap my command tower. Play a mystic more. I'll pa pass my turn for that. Go to my turn. I'll activate my commander. Draw two. Discarding a merchant scroll and creating another token. Um, on white, paying extra for Rustic. As percent up and almost draw same amount. <laughs> We are in an interesting spot here. There's for something on an Oswald with the, our reversal in hand. It is infinite mana almost. We need another rock, which is kind of awkward. Like, it's awkward how we're almost there, but not really. We do have a lot of powerful plays. The problem is, it's kind of too powerful. Like, each player is kind of out of it. Like, the Nestle is really scary. Um, but, like, there is still... Like, for example, I can sacrifice my Nox Opal with Oswald to get a Scout Clamp, which is a lot of cards. But I can't use them before I, I get punished for all, all that value. So I think my best play is just laying, laying back with my interaction, which I do have a lot of. Lighten tutoring in end step, hopefully, if I can. And get like a Grim Monolith or something. Like something that actually goes infinite. But it's a really interesting spot because we can actually win here if we were to really try. But in the end, I think the safest play is to take it slow and just grind it out. And then I'll pass the turn. In your end step, I'm gonna pay two to cycle, rebuild, discarding it, drawing a card. And then I go to my turn and untap. So we drew a Gilded Drake, that is great. We could use it to make Nessa Hall flicker out, but we're not gonna do that because I think it's time to actually deal with Hinata. So we don't have to sit there and pay so much mana for our Swords of Plowshares. I'm gonna play a Flooded Strand. Then I'm gonna cast a Gilded Drake, paying extra for Rhystic Study. Uh, so I think even though it goes away, we should target the Nessa Hall because I have removal as well. We can work together here to make it harder for him to keep it. So you're saying that when it comes back in my end step, you're gonna remove it? No, I'm removing it in response to him uh, flickering it ah, away from you, which is, for, which is all his whole hand, actually. No, that doesn't work because if he has five cards, I target Nessa Hall, he discards five, goes down to two. Yeah. You cast a spell, he draws a card, and then he can still activate it again. Yeah, then we still discard his whole hand. That's still pretty good. Sure, that, that is true. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I'm I'm game. Uh, Jordan, Gilladrick is targeting Nessa Hall. I was actually intending to target Hinata, but here we go. Let's take the Nessa Hall. In discard to your discard, I'll tap three. Cast the Resculpt targeting Nessa Hall. Not paying for a stick. Draw a card. Or Miramora. <laughs> or Nessa Hall. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I love that we are so good at interacting with one player, but we're still feeding another player. And so does my Gilded Drake to the grave as well. I want to go to combat with my commander at Anis. 
I'm gonna cost Sword to Plowshare, paying extra for Rhystic Study, and targeting with Sword to Plowshare's your commander Hinata, and paying extra for the Hinata tax effect, and casting Visions from Beyond, not paying extra, so you can draw, a, you can totally draw three cards here. No, I'm not paying for SCP Sentinel. Yeah, I gain four life and Hinata goes to my commander. And I draw three cards because of Visions of Beyond. And here I'm passing the turn, discarding to hand size, Sapphire Medallion, and see the truth. Go for it. Okay, uh, go to combat. Um, attack mode 3. I take 8. Um, I will pass the turn. I'm down to 5 life. I don't think we're actually gonna win this one. We can be killed by Pontus, and if Pontus wants to kill us, that is. But that Nessa Hall have been a real problem this entire game. So much value and in play, and I'm also being killed by a 7 7. That's kinda cool though, but yeah, tough match. <laughs> I will draw. I have to pay for my Remora as well. I just pass her. Uh, going, going down to hand size. Take my turn. Go to combat. Uh, six damage coming at once. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna pray for my life. I'm gonna block <laughs> one of them and then I'm gonna die. Okay. Post combat main phase. At one, cast the silence. You can both draw, not pay anything. I'm gonna hard cast first negation. Uh, I'll respond. Also, will pitching rhystic study. Yeah, you may, you may all draw. Uh, pass priority on force of will. Uh, I, in response to the force of will targeting the force of negation, which is in turn targeting the silence, I will red elemental blast the force of will. Yeah, I'll respond to this. Uh, so you're targeting my force of will. Um, respond with the fluster storm, counting the force of negation. You may draw. I'll tap my tundra and play my own fluster storm. I'll pay two. Screw it. I'll take two damage. Yeah, that's it for me. That was a stack. Yeah, definitely. You had that much interaction. Uh, I'll respond to your fluster storm again uh, activate my turn draw two uh discarding a lightning tutor then it's fine sadly uh before everything goes away i have one floating tapping two i'm gonna play intuition this uh, is still a main sensor you play yeah uh no i'm gonna exile the simian spirit guide hmm? take a damage i'm going to in response to that i'm gonna flash in a dress down can i draw a card so that's there this is here i'm just gonna uh, grab breach package um, yeah, Pontus, which one do I get? Uh, I can have LED. Yeah, I'll pass after that on everything. Uh, so my stress got better on me, or stress is the wrong way, but like, eagerness, I guess. I saw a really cool play where, where I tap Oswald to get Dramatic Verse, or, or it's a Conceptor, then untap, tap him again, and get the Mana Vault to go, actually go off. I saw that, and I saw, saw my two Kench spells, and I was like, this is easy, this is free. Uh, sadly, that's not the case. They had interaction. I should have cast the Gilded Drake first, which would be very much better. Maybe Anis would still have cast his dress down. That would have stopped me, but I'm not sure he would have. Uh, and then I would have the value. Like, I think I still wouldn't have gotten it. It's a bit too much, in there was a bit too much interaction. It was close, I still have it. But now Anis is really scary and I don't know how to stop him. I'm basically just hoping Jordan draws interaction. Um, yeah, because of dress down, I can't feed <laughs> Jordan interaction. I'll just pass instead. All right, going to my turn. Okay, I'm gonna play City Brass. I'm gonna move to combat and attack Honest for uh, eight. And then I'm going to cast my commander. Take one from Sidious. And then I will pass my turn. Um, okay, so Honest is probably set up to win next turn, uh, which is tough. So I think my best line is to play Umazawa and then Lightsteal next turn if I can and just kill him. Uh, and hopefully we'll draw enough cards with uh, Nezahal to interact with him this turn. He triggers up upkeep, I'll pay for my Remora, then I'll draw a card, cool. I'm gonna tap one white and I would like to cast a silence. I have one floating. You sponsor silence, I'll tap a blue. You untap my commander with uh, a Minamo. I'll tap Ancient Tomb, taking two, floating one, to activate my commander. Got two, guarding mana crypt. Still in response, <laughs> oh, but I miss draws as well. <laughs> So bad. Still in response, uh, tap one, take another damage. Uh, cast dramatic reversal. You both may draw. Uh, untap my two permanents or my creatures as well, I guess. Uh, then I'll tap my commander again. Draw. Discarding a fish. And that's it, sadly. Cool. Uh, now I am going to. Do I need anything in my hand? I really don't. I'm gonna crack my LED, discarding my entire hand, which is dark side, soul ring, twin flame, pollute, uh, brainstorm, some land, uh, jewel lotus, archmage emeritus a grinding station, another land, and a brain freeze. Three white from the LED, 
The one floating colorless. I'm going to tap this Tundra. I would like to flashback Savine's Reclamation. Targeting Unruled Breach. And because I flashback Savine's, I can target one more non permanent that costs three or less. So I'll get my dress down. With this, I have Breach and LED. And I also have Grinding Station. And everyone is silenced. So from here, yeah, it's just wins. Let's see. So here's a Grinding Station if you want to do it that way. And here's a Brain Freeze if you want to do it that way. And here's an LED. And I win by milling the entire table uh, with uh, a big brain freeze after I've ca cast my LED a couple times. And after after no one has any library left, I will wheel. Yeah, we won in the end. Um, Hinata didn't get to do too, too much. She was mostly just there, but she ate some interaction and she made a couple things a bit harder for our opponents. Uh, and then at in the end, I just won off the back of Ristic and Mystic Remora, just drawing me a bunch of cards. I wouldn't call it a clean game, but uh, it was it was a game. It was definitely a game. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.